and it was a stroke of luck for a movie crew who were physically assaulted with several gunshots from a drunken police officer. Plus, TV Africa exclusively obtained the video, and here's the report. Kolade Johnson, Solomon Izzy, Tina Ezekwe, these are just a few of the names of dozens of Nigerians who have fallen to the bullets of officers of the Nigerian police force. In many of these cases, justice is never served to the families of these victims. A few days ago, after a film crew were lucky to walk away with their lives after being confronted by an officer of the Nigerian police force in the Aja area of Lagos, identified as Officer Ali from the Ogumbo police station, Aja, Lagos. The officer in the video clips taken by guests at the hotel show an obviously highly intoxicated officer Ali firing his weapon at one of the victims as he staggered back and forth, screaming orders at the victims while physically assaulting them multiple times. Plus TV caught up with the victims and they got to share their story. He said we have to do in a movie, that that's a lie. So I think PM was trying to convince him that we are actors, we are crew members, you know. We are just lost there for a movie, he said that we are criminals. The next thing he did was he said, he asked, um, what is it called, the sound guy to enter, the, to enter his vehicle, he put his vehicle. He asked him to enter his vehicle. So that one entered. He said make up, he asked him to enter next, I enter. And then I asked make up to enter, make up enter. It was not left with these guys, editor and then PM. So editor enters the car. The next thing he did, he said, we should move our legs. He brought out another gun. Then he asked me, what was his name? He came to the next The next thing he said, he's going to cripple PM today. PM is a thief. So he cracks the gun. He almost shot at PM. I think he shot now, but he, he shot the bullet on the floor. It was on the floor. If you go to the hotel, you still see the mark. I think we still have, we have the video. Stand up. Stand up. Who are you? talk more on this incident is the victim himself, the man that was ordered to remove his uh, clothes. Ibrahim, a member of the film crew, the convener, and SARS uh, Shegwa Wosonya also will be joining us online. Good afternoon, Mr. Wosonya. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for having me on your news hour. Thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. I will start with asking what you would say is the reason for this level of recklessness. Thank you very much. What we just saw is an it's an eyesore. It's a shame of a nation. It shows that our police institution is totally derelict, and we it needs an urgent um, intervention for it to be able to um, stand the test of time, or let alone uh, con compete with several authorities globally. There is nothing. There is nothing that excuses or that permits or that gives room for a police officer who wears a uniform or who, is, who carries a gun in the name of the state as empowered by the government to actually be inebriated enough to assault citizens like this. This is not part of the rule of engagement 
of Nigerian police. And this is not how, I don't even understand if this is from a horror movie or if this is from a TV show or this is from something, a, a clip from hell. This should not be happening in a country that has a government. This should not happen in a co country that has a president. How can, I, I can't even, I can't, I can't even comprehend how, you know, someone of this caliber can be a member of the police, police force. And this is what people have been talking about daily, daily since 2017 that we've started this campaign yeah. about police officers who look like arm robbers, who act like kidnappers, who are far above the law of the state, and who does things as cement fit in their eyes. It's, a, it's indeed shocking. We, we understand how much work you have also put, put in personally, searching for some semblance of police reforms and, you know, some level of accountability. How effective would you say the reforms, the, you know, the little steps here and there that have been made so far, how effective have they been? Because I, I know that every now and then we celebrate, you know, a little announcement from uh, the force headquarters in Abuja, stating new rules and new regulations. But how effective have any of these reforms been? Thank you very much. The reform process itself begins with legislation. And as far as that is concerned, it is still in process. We have not started any reform whatsoever. We are in the process of uh, dealing with the police reform bill, which will be passed into law as soon as the, there is a concurrence between the House and the Senate. Now, what we have now are stop gaps. And as you know, stop gaps are as temporary as they can ever be. Before the current IGP, we have a lot of laws in place that restricts police officers from doing what you just saw in the picture, from uh, not wearing their uniform and from going out without being called on a distress call to attend to issues that pertains to the purpose for which they were created. But as you can see now, that the new, upon the assumption of power of the new IG, he relaxed the entire uh, provisions made by that stopgap. So, we have been saying that stop gaps actually are not solutions. They are not the reform. The only things we put in place temporarily before we begin to, before we finalize the passing of the bill. The progress we have made thus far is that uh, there's no money, there's no money for the police. That has been sorted because we now have the police uh, uh, trust fund, yeah. which begins to solve the problem of police operational, uh, uh, to ease the police operations across Nigeria. And that is in process now. In fact, the, the, the president has inaugurated the board that's going to execute that. Even though we have issues with the leadership of the board, I think that's a small thing. The main thing is that we now have a law that actually puts in place provisions for the operations of the police. Yeah. What we need to actually uh, in, uh, work on is the police reform bill that will stop what you're just saying now. All okay. the stop bag gap put in place, we have to continue to tweak on a monthly or weekly basis to ensure it works for us. As you can okay. see, as of last week, just a few days ago, the police called the shutdown of, they announced the shutdown of all the RIT squad yes, I and the uh, STS squad across yeah. Nigeria. And that's one of the reasons uh, that, that's, that, that came to be because of the announcement or because of the news, because of the activities and the engagement that yeah. we had you know, no, with the IRT, one, one second, you know, condemning the Mister, actors. Oh, yeah. One second, we, 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 let, let us quickly now field. speak with, with um, Ibrahim. He was the one, um, of course, in the video that was seen. Uh, good afternoon, Ibrahim. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, how are you? So let's quickly speak with you. What Was there any sort of provocation that led to that incident? Mm, not really. We just came back from location that night. So immediately we got to the hotel, we wanted to have our, our break, our welfare that night around 10 o'clock. Yeah. We sat down outside the compound of the hotel. Not, maybe like in the next 20 minutes, we just saw this man just as in parading. We didn't even see him so we are in the hotel. We just enter his car, bring us a gun, shoot a two bullet up. We were like, what's happening? Immediately, said, but we drop, we drop our phone, collect our phone. Started slapping us that we are TV, I'm over. He didn't allow us to even bring out our, our ID card. Like, okay, we are filmmakers, we are coming from location. We see that direct of this dude. Before we knew, she was shooting gun. She was naked of our clothes. He, he carried us to one place around after, before I judge, we sat down on the floor. He carried back up with the hotel back again. So, oh, 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 immediately was, we came back to the hotel. He, was he intoxicated? The manager, manager was like, hello? Was he intoxicated? Did it seem obvious that he had been drinking? I think he's, I think, 
he's drunk because he's, he's, as in, we, we met one, vodka, one, one bottle of vodka in his car. Yeah. And also, let me ask you, did you oh, fear for your life? You know, t tell us what the experience was like for you. Did you fear that your life may have been taken that night? I'm only talking to you by God, by God grace now, because he almost shot me to death. He shot the gun as to my, my face. That was my first time I was facing that kind of thing. Because he actually said, when you fire the first bullet finish, you now be another gun again. That's going to shoot that second gun finish. We are like six, we are four boys and two girls. That day, you almost shot one guy seven. That guy one every. You almost shot the girl to me. Actually, yeah. can see it in the video. It's crazy. Just me. So, when I said I should off my clothes, I was naked. So sorry you had to go through that, and we're glad that you're still alive to share your story today. Uh, Mr. Awosonia, I'm going to end with you. How do you think citizens can act to diffuse situations like this and, of course, avoid worst-case scenarios? I think the best thing is that once you see a drunken officer like that behaving the way he's behaving, just cooperate with the whole thing and then report afterwards. We can always address this situation by engaging, by ensuring that that police officer never repeats this again. Yeah. The, the officer involved, as we, as we speak, will be arrested and will, and will be paraded, you know, to, as a lesson to others. This is not acceptable. Uh, Ibrahim, please confirm if you made a report and if there's any investigation currently on, on this incident. Yes, yes. We actually make a report. My director make a report. I was actually supposed to come to the police station also. But because I'm filming, I couldn't have the time to go there. I mean, I just thank God that nothing happened to me because I'm dead by now. I'm giving to the calling. I'm doing all this picture that I'm doing now. Once again, we're glad that you can, we can share your story and you're with us uh, today. Thank you very much, Ibrahim, and we will speak with you again. Mr. Wasson, it's always a pleasure speaking with you, and uh, God keep Thank you. you very stay much, safe. Sir. Thank you. Thank you.